I, I struggle with it, you know, there's, there's always that kind of like, what if, you know, like mm -hmm. what if I had moved to Hollywood right after boyhood and just like dove into that. Eller, what's going on? Hey, not much. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm really good. Where are you currently at? Uh, I'm currently in New Mexico. Are you filming anything or? No, no, I'm just, uh, I'm just traveling kind of. I'm, I'm actually probably going to be moving out to this area soon. So really? Yeah. Any reason why New Mexico just like the kind of being away from the limelight and all or? Well, I mean, there's I mean, there's a big industry here. Um, that is true. So that's that's a big part of it, you know, is wanting to be closer to to work. Um, I, I also do a lot of uh, behind the scenes work, like our art department and hmm. uh, set design and dressing and, and that kind of stuff. So once you know once things settle down with all this with the pandemic um hopefully i'll be able to get into some work in albuquerque um but it's also just it's gorgeous here and it's uh time for me to leave texas it's i've, I've been there my whole life so yeah and it's not too far from texas too so if you need to go by there it's not a long commute you know especially with a flight yeah yeah exactly it's it's a different place, but it's not too far from home. Well, I like your pad. I like the bookshelf with all these books, and I like the plants. You, you, you've settled in at this spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're here for a little bit. That's awesome. I actually built that bookshelf. That's another thing I do. Oh, you built it? Yeah. <laughs> really? Wow. And that's a pretty. That's a that's a pretty high bookshelf. It's not just yeah. like one or two layers. I mean. Yeah, it's uh, six, six feet tall. So that's something I've been playing with in this pandemic time, you know, trying to think of ways that I can make money from home, might, might try to make furniture for people. That's cool. Have you always been into that or just something you took in up over the past year? Um, it's, it's been the past couple years, you know, I've, I've done construction on and off for most of my life um that was that was that was the first work i had was doing like landscaping and like deck building and that kind of mm -hmm. stuff um and then yeah i guess it was winter of 2019 i kind of started apprenticing with a carpenter and learning about that stuff and yeah it just it comes naturally you know i have a lot to learn still for sure but i enjoy it it's uh just so different than the entertainment industry. Yeah, I was just like, wow, I'm learning so much about you just from that. Is that kind of like a hobby or passion and sense? I mean, if you're you're learning under carpenters and stuff, it means you're pretty serious about it. It's something you definitely are, are interested in for sure, right? Yeah, I'm definitely interested in it. And it, it's, it's a passion and an art form. And it's also, you know, I think it's a great kind of cure to mm -hmm. all of the just mental uh ridiculousness that goes along with acting and being a part of that that world you know which i love but it can really take a toll on yeah. your on your personality no and question the, the you know the working with my hands is a really great way to recover from that I like that, you know, because I like that uh, speaking to different actors, I always ask them, like, what are some of your hobbies and interests outside of the industry? Because if you're so consumed, in a sense, with the industry, that is not healthy because it's there's so many ups and downs in, in you know, in, in that industry. And you, you need to have something you know, else to do. Yeah, sure. you have to, because there's so many lulls, too, of no not booking work and things not going on, especially during the past year over the pandemic, where it kind of shut down for some point that it's good to have other other outlets to, to kind of rejuvenate you or just escape to. So that's great. I, that's awesome to hear that, that you have another, in a sense, passion, you know, outside of, yeah. you know, performing in that way. Yeah. Yeah. I was, you know, I, I was really inspired by uh, the, oh, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called now, but the, the documentary about uh, David Lynch's art practice the art life is what it's called that's right and, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that that he talks about in that film is just how how like it, he sees it as 
completely essential for any kind of artist to have something else that they do that is not connected to the soul that's not in, an expression of you know your the, your deepest self it's just like a task where you do something and you see it you see the product and you finish it and it's just like it's straightforward and it's you know it's tactile and yeah yeah i always felt like to be an actor, to be a real well-rounded actor, you have to be a real person first with real uh, interests, real hobbies, like living like a full normal person life to right. bring that to your work. You know what I mean? Then you can yeah. actually understand different characters, different perspectives. If you're locked in trying to be an actor, you know, just overly into the craft, like you're not growing as a human and, and right. a lot of roles you require that. Yeah, you can lose touch with what yep. it is that you're trying to express. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I've been a fan of yours for, for a long time, obviously. And uh, I like this film, uh, The Shoplifters of the World. I didn't, okay, so tell me how much of this was a true story, because the Smiths are a real band, so they're yeah. not fictional by any means. But was there any sort of incident like this where people actually rebelling? Or, or how much of this is the truth? Because I was wondering throughout, like, this is so wild, but yeah, I could see I mean, it being so possibly true. You get, you get different versions of the story. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, some, some people swear that it happened and it's, you know, and then, you know, I think, I think some version of it happened. And then there is this legend that has been born out of that. You know, uh -huh. I think at the very least, someone thought about doing what Dean did. Um, that's, that's, that's one version of the story that I've heard that he kind of like was all ready to do it. And then like, had a stroke of conscience and you know turned himself in um but i think it's i think it's the most fun to just believe that it happened right um, and, that's and what, what that, that transpired that's, that's out of it tell you yeah and the, what transpired out of it too i mean you know it's it's crazy that you know we we kind of think that we're now you know we, we we're more socially active and more with social media everyone kind of but we've had different generations of like being proactive and being passionate about their beliefs and their interests too. And I like how this kind of underlines like in the eighties, there's a, there's a culture too, that, that youth united together. I think we've had that always in a sense in our history, you know, um, you know, in the sixties, seventies, and it's cool. I, I love the eighties as a time period, no matter what, yeah. but I like how in a sense we didn't become like united or, or, you know, kind of grouped together in, in the last 10 years you know this has been going on for different decades and generations where kind of youth uh comes together for a certain cause or reason yeah ab absolutely you know i think that you know recognizing that and feeling that kind of timelessness of the subculture and of the the unrest and the these feelings of isolation and you know, in, in infuriation with the government and society and standards and sexuality and, and all of this, you know, it, it's, it's, I think it's really validating to kind of see that reflected in an earlier time period. And it's also interesting, you know, what, what you're saying, this kind of idea that like, oh, all this technology has brought us together in this, in this new, totally new way. And, you know, in a lot of ways that is true, but there's also like, there's a, there's something, there's a certain like novelty that has been lost because we have so much access to mm -hmm. communicating with people at all times, all over the world and having access to art, to all art, you know, like more or less we have access to the majority of the art that humans have ever created, like at all times. And so it's it's not quite the same as it was back then where like you find this record and you search out these interviews and you search out these people who are interested in the same things and you're bonded by these things that you've discovered together and these, these clothes that you wear together. And like, it, it, it was, you know, there's a, there's an individuality and a kind of uh, separateness 
that I think those subcultures like the like the you know Smiths fans mm -hmm. um, felt that is is a lot more elusive nowadays because we just are so saturated with so much different art and so many different cultures that yeah it's really cool to see just like wow like that was just it a whole lifestyle for people and mm -hmm. it really brought people together and really allowed people to to be seen in a way that you know that they never had before yeah and express themselves the way they they dress and you know just look and and, and speaking of that it kind of drives me into the next thing like you're looking a film i loved it man it was almost rec unrecognizable i had to like double take a few times <laughs> like is that you uh tell yeah. me about uh your wardrobe and just your your complete look in this film was this by your kind of decision or was this the costume department and uh the the in a set the filmmakers i want to know kind of how did that come about? Because I loved it. I thought it was unique and different and you really uh, changed things up. Yeah, I mean, it was very much written into the script, you know, mm. like really exactly the way that it is. Like the Morrissey hair, okay, the yep, John yep. Marr necklace and the turtleneck. Like it was exactly what you pictured reading it. Um, the and, jet black yeah, hair, I mean, right? Just, sorry. The jet black hair too, you know? Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. Um, and it, I mean, I've only done a, a couple of uh, period films. Mm -hmm. um, and it, 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 it's, it's so helpful, you know, to be in such a specific, dramatic wardrobe and hairstyle. And it's like having that, kind of does a large part of the work for me you know mm -hmm. it, it kind of takes out this element of like creating that part of the character where it's just like just putting the clothes on and having the hair it's like okay that's just it's already done like i'm in it i'm there you know and then it's kind of just finding the emotions within that um but yeah i i, I like you know very uh pronounced wardrobe it, it, it's it's fun and and it makes my job easier yeah i always wondered that too like when when you are in a kind of a period movie or you gotta fit in a certain you know era it does it make you feel like you're in it and i i would from what you're saying too and the look of it yeah it must help you when you kind of look in a mirror and, and look everything around you you kind of feel like you are in the 80s or, or whatnot you know even like i love the um, the radio station too, it kind of had that vibe of when I used to do college radio, you know, with all the uh, cassettes and, and the, the CDs and all that kind of stacked up where you had to do all the work. You didn't press one button to have everything programmed on a computer. Yeah. Like you had to search through it too. It gave me like cool memories of, uh, you know, even my college days of like working at a radio station. Yeah, just the, yeah, that, that tedious tactile yeah. joy of everything. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a really strong aesthetic and a strong vibe, you know, and that that it does so much. It's it's so different than than you know working on a you know a current a, a film set in in current times, you know, because it just between the the set dressing, all of the art and the clutter and the cars and then the wardrobe and the hair, and then also just submersing myself in the Smiths, you know, in the catalog. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm listening to the music every day. I'm watching interviews. I'm watching concert footage. It's like, there was just this whole kind of world to submerge myself in that, yeah, it makes it, you know, it, it, it really makes it easier to kind of just be lost in it and then to just do the work of finding the character because the world is just, it's all there, you know? I don't have to like make that up. It's just, it's, 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 it's all around me. I love the cast. It's cool because you have so many, it, it seemed like you guys would have bonded over this experience. I mean, you kind of all have to be friends in the story, but I would imagine you guys bonded just because of this experience. I mean, you have, Helena Howard, and I just spoke to Olivia Licardi last week, literally. So nice. it's cool seeing her again. And then, then James Bloor, someone else I spoke to not too long ago. It's cool to kind of see. Like oh, I just put that for me. 
all of you when well, there's an is someone <laughs> jumped on our line excited to hear what we're talking about uh but yeah it, you got the scenes with a lot of your scenes with joe maginello how cool was this set because it seems like you guys had a great mix of talent and kind of youth and experience uh it was it seemed awesome i don't know how was it for you out there yeah i mean it, it was it was a blast it, it was an absolute blast you know and i i had been attached to the film for gosh like a while before okay. we before we shot you know i I had, I had auditioned for it quite a while before before it, it happened and so it was you know it had been living in my head for so long and those characters and you know just turning myself into a smiths fan and and all of that had, had been a lot of build up for me um and i you know and aside from joe i think the other actors kind of came in closer to the you know closer to production um so it was like it, you know it, it felt kind of like being joined you know like i had been there like kind of living in that world mm -hmm. for so long and then like oh like here's my friends that i like i knew they existed but i kind of didn't know what they looked like and then like yep. here they are you know and then it's also funny because I, you know, my, my perspective of the film shooting it was really the same as Dean's perspective because I, you know, we, all the actors, like we were hanging out in between shooting and everything, but I, I saw very little of the rest of the film until, until watching it now, mm. you know, so what they were doing, going around partying and doing all of that that's happening while I'm in the radio station like that was kind of a that was a fantasy you know and I think mm -hmm. that's how it is for Dean too that he's like he's doing this crazy thing and just hoping hoping that someone cares that someone's listening especially Cleo um and so yeah you know and and, and it was great you know I, I I loved working with everybody I you know Stephen Stephen's been a friend for many many years now and you know joe was a blast to work with he's very generous and very hardworking and really passionate about the material you know and 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 our relationship in many ways kind of mirrored the relationship between the two characters like hmm. we we're both pretty similar to our characters and so our kind of bonding was similar like coming from these very different subcultures and kind of finding the the common ground and like just seeing how you know we even though these types of music and expression seem really different like people kind of gravitate to towards them for the same reasons the same feelings of of isolation and you know not belonging um and and yeah it was a you know it was wonderful to meet helena and i've i've known nick kraus for gosh 15 years you oh, know wow. he was he was in boyhood back back in the day that's right um, oh so my gosh they even put it together to, to hang out with him again and and yeah james is just a such a sweetheart very very intelligent person i i, I wish i had gotten to act with you know with all of them more mm -hmm. like it's you know the the story of the film is so cool but just for me personally i was like I, I wished I could have spent more time with them because they're they're great people. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Boyhood. I mean, now we're kind of in awards season, and it was what like five years ago or so that that movie where we all start hearing about you, you know, and uh, and that story. Man, when you look back at it, it's, it's kind of crazy that you've been on camera in a sense for all yeah. these years, you know. Um, going back to that experience now that you look back you know I'm, i'll say this i'm kind of surprised that uh your career didn't skyrocket after that movie like in a sense where you've done some interesting projects and especially this movie like this one and you've done so but i thought you're gonna like be like this big name that is gonna be right. in, in, in everything and maybe that's a good thing too that you didn't turn into that um, i mean yeah definitely for my own mental health Mm -hmm. um, I think it it is a good thing, you know. I've definitely, yeah, I struggle with it, you know. There's there's always that kind of, like, what if, you know, like, mm -hmm. what if I had moved to Hollywood right after Boyhood and just like dove into that, you know? I could have, I I could have, it could have happened, or it could have not happened, you know. There's no way to really know. 
Um, and so, yeah, I mean, part of that, part of that was, a, was a choice for sure. Like mm -hmm. I, I love acting. I love being on set. I love collaborating with a filmmaker and with a cast. Being a celebrity is, I don't like it. You know, it's, I don't it's, see that's it's, you from what I'm gathering from you. I don't I think you like being a regular person kind of and going under the radar and doing what you want to do with your life instead of being in that spotlight. That's a lot of pressure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a lot of pressure. And it's, it's a really tricky labyrinth to navigate mm -hmm. of, you know, yeah, maintaining mental health and integrity and, you know, relationships with family and anyone, you know, I, I have so much respect for, you know, someone like Ethan, Ethan yeah. Hawk, who's like, he's one, he's, he, he maintains that balance, you know, he is so passionate about his work, he is in it all the way, all the time, and yet he is also a wonderful father, and, you know, loves his family so much, and, you know, manages to be a real person at the same time. But I don't know that I quite have that in me, you know, so I've been, I've been really grateful to be able to have the career that I have had post boyhood, and like, kind of set my own pace, yep. you know, that I that I don't, I feel really lucky that I've been able to continue working like about a project a year is kind of how it's been. And like, that's really perfect for me. Like it, it's, that's, that's kind of the right, the right pace. Um, and, and that's not, you know, it's not something that, that, that most actors can really do. Like, it's like either, either you're doing it all the time mm -hmm. or no one cares, everyone loses interest in you, you know? And so I feel really lucky that I made enough of a name through boyhood to be able to kind of act when I when I want to and not have to feel the pressure to like be working constantly honestly uh, it's it's all about kind of what works for you you know at the end of the day if you're okay with not having a celebrity you don't need that in your life and it doesn't seem like you do because you you get to do still the work you still get to do movies and work with great people and don't have that like you said the mental stress that comes with it and all and you can still do other interests i think you really found a great balance for yourself amid all that and that's a big credit to you and i, I think that's that's really telling in a lot of ways uh, about, you know, being yourself and knowing who you are and knowing what works for you, you know, and I think you've done that throughout your career and you're still doing that and exploring different avenues. Uh, I really hope that that's the way you are and, and never change because that's really a kind of the, in a sense, it, it, a lot of people who might be celebrities might be jealous that uh, of being able to be in control of your life in that, that essence. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate you recognizing that. And it's, you know, the biggest thing I'll say is it's just, it's a work in progress, you know? <laughs> yep. I'm definitely, it's, I'm still figuring it out as I go. But. We all are. <laughs> That's the kind of the story of boyhood. You know, you're always growing up no matter what. And, and yeah. life never has a finality. You know, it's always something new, something new to learn and experience. And I think you're living that life in a weird way. You know, the boyhood life is, is kind of all of us, you know, in that sense. Yeah. Eller, this has been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. I, I've been wanting to connect with you a long time. I, I really enjoyed this film and just your work throughout. And it's cool to, to get to, to kind of talk to the person behind it and, and see the kind of, uh, you know, full, complete, individual, well-rounded person that you are. So uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Yeah, thank you, Jim. It's, it's really nice to meet you. Hope you have a good day. You too. Hope to connect with you again down the road and hear how the New, New Mexico living is, you know? Yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see. And hopefully, hopefully I uh, have, yeah, have another project to talk about soon. Absolutely. Well, keep on doing you and I'll talk to you soon then. All right. Bye-bye. Take care, my friend.